Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at upgrading the firmware on a Ruckus ICX device. I do have a lab device that we're going to walk through and I'm going to go ahead and get into that now. I'm connected to its console. Um, before we start upgrading, we kind of have to figure out though where we are. So we can do that with show flash. I'm going to run that command and we can see uh, this particular device does have two software partitions. It's got a primary and a secondary and both of them are running router code. However, the primary version is 8090, while the secondary version is 8091. Um, that doesn't necessarily tell us, however, where we're booting from. So if we run show version, we can see that we are actually booting from primary, so we are running the 8090 router code. So that's good to determine exactly where we're at, but um, let's figure out kind of where we should go with our software upgrade. So I do know that this isn't the latest. So what I'm actually going to do is go over to the support.ruckus wireless site and click on downloads and select my product. So I said I was doing a 7150 upgrade. So I'm going to choose that. And right from this uh, software downloads page, we can see the recommended software release and it does say that it is 8095G. So we recommend that you know you check out the supportruckuswireless.com site and choose your product to see what the recommended software is. So if you have no idea, this is the, this is the version that you should be running. Um, you shouldn't really deviate from the recommended version unless you have a very specific reason to do so. So maybe there is a feature that's available in a different release or there's a patch fix in a different release that you need for your environment. And you're going to kind of know that um, based on, you know, your your operations and your workings uh, with with our team. So um, but if you don't you don't really have any of those prerequisites, you should always be looking to access the recommended software. So I, that's actually what we're going to we're going to demonstrate. So we're going to go from 8090 up to 8095G. There's a couple of pieces of documentation that do help you with this. Uh, we have software upgrade guides, first of all. Uh, the software upgrade guides kind of walk you through the process of getting from version A to version B. And depending on which version you're coming from and which version you're going to, there could be a step in between those. Um, so it'll outline, the upgrade guide will kind of outline um, that process and what other steps may be required to, to get you to where you need to be. Then there is the release notes. So the release notes are going to outline all of the feature enhancements, any new features that are available for the release, as well as outline kind of changes to like command structure or syntax. And it's important to kind of understand what those are so that you can be aware of if you're running some configurations that are impacted by those those changes, you can understand what those impacts might be. Um, so we've got both of those out there to help you. Uh, and, and as I said, I'm going to be upgrading to 8095G. So I'm going to go ahead and just download the zip file. And I actually already have. You can see there's several different folders that represent each of the hardware platforms that this release represents. Uh, we can also see a couple of manifest files. So if we were to dig into the 7150 folder and look at the uh, subfolders and images, we can actually see the image files that I would be using if all I was going to be doing was upgrading a 7150. Um, but if I go back up to that top level, uh, I do want to point out the manifest file is very useful because it, it it gives you the ability to upgrade any of these models with the same command. You don't have to dig through any subfolders or file names uh, and make sure, uh, do I have the right file name for this particular piece of hardware? You can just actually hit it with the manifest upgrade command and the manifest file is going to do the work for you. It's going to go and look and see what the hardware is, see where the file that you need for that hardware is and go ahead and make the magic happen and make sure that all the files that it needs are correctly implemented and upgraded. So that's actually what we're going to, to demonstrate as well when we do our upgrade. Uh, we're going to do a TFTP upgrade. We could be doing a SCP upgrade. We could be doing an HTTP upgrade or we could be doing a USB upgrade. But the way my lab is set up, I'm going to go ahead and do a TFTP upgrade. So let's go ahead and jump into that.
the first thing that we need to do is actually just hit it with the uh, command. So obviously I have connectivity to my TFTP server. My TFTP server was, uh, you know, set up already. So I have everything where it needs to be. And that would be the same. Like you need to do that whether or not you're doing TFTP or USB if you had to put the files on the drive or whatever. You've got to have all that stuff set up. But now we're ready to actually just do the command. So, um, and it said it was an incomplete command because it is, yeah. So we are running the copy TFTP system dash manifest command. Then we're specifying the location of our TFTP server followed by the name of the specific manifest file uh, for this version. So as you can see, that's fi08095g underscore manifest dot text. Now um, there's two different, there's two additional uh, commands that we need to add on to this. The first is to denote, you know, where, um, which flash partition we're going to copy this to. So if I tab this out, you can see my options are primary and secondary, and I do want to copy this over to primary. The next command that we're going to tab out is, okay, so we know where we're putting it, but which version uh, of the image are we putting out there? Are we doing router code or switching code? Um, and as we talked about earlier, I am running router code in both partitions. So I'm going to go ahead and choose router image here as well. So once I hit enter, this thing should take off and start its upgrade. All right, and you can see that the manifest upgrade completed uh, successfully. That doesn't mean, however, that we're already running the upgraded firmware. Uh, we would have to reload for that to take effect, which we're not going to do yet. But we are going to rerun the show flash command, and we should now see that the primary uh, flash partition has the 8095G code in it, and we can see that it does. But that secondary code still does not, and that makes sense because we targeted only the primary. Um, so we could rerun that command again, only we could choose secondary. Um, instead of primary, and it, and it would totally um, copy that over to the secondary as well. And we do recommend, you know, unless there's a very specific reason for you to have different code versions um, or different code types in primary and secondary, good idea to just keep them the same. Um, but another thing that we can do is just copy from one uh, partition to the other as well. So we're going to do the copy flash and we're going to tab that out. So copy flash, uh, we can copy to flash. So copy flash flash and tab that out again. And what do we want to do? Do we want to copy secondary to primary, primary to secondary, or if we had a stack unit, would we want to kind of copy different versions around that stack? We actually want to do secondary. We want to copy what's in primary right now to secondary. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and hit enter. And while that processes, I will speed up time and we'll come back in just a moment. All right, and that uh, flash to flash copy is also done now. So if we rerun our show flash command, we should see that we actually have the same version in both partitions. So at this point, you know, all we've done is copy some things to these partitions. We, if we run a show ver, we're still not running that version. We're still running 8090 uh, on this device. So what we need to do is we need to do a write memory uh, to save any changes that we had, and we need to do reload the device. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we will just do a jump cut to when this thing is booted. All right, fresh off of our reload, let's go ahead and do a show version. And we should be able to verify now that we are running that SPR08095G release. So again, show flash should still show that we are running that uh, same image in both the primary and the secondary, but now we also are, are running it live in our system. So that is all you should need to do to do a TFTP upgrade. Again, check those release notes, check those upgrade guides, and we'll see you in the future. Thanks.